my name is Kate Zagararis. I am an effects artist from Toronto. Also a little bit of a, a super effects supervisor, kind of branching into that now. Teacher, historian, and then I'm a, I also dabble in scientific visualization. Um, I do quite a, very, a bunch of various different things across the internet. Um, I first kind of broke into visual effects uh, five, six years ago, um, was where I first got my first job. But before that, um, I went to school for 3D animation in Toronto. I chose a very interesting program where they didn't really teach visual effects. Um, I had kind of gotten the idea when I was in my last year of high school that I wanted to go into animation well without really understanding what animation really was and having a very limited view of animation as well. Fun fact about me, I was never really allowed to watch cartoons. I wasn't really allowed to watch uh, Stargate or Star Trek or Star Wars a lot. Um, so I had a lot of limited like interactions with like a really big um kind of sci-fi or effects heavy or animation centric things um and if i wanted to watch them i kind of had to sneak watch them on my own or my friends would like introduce them to me on the side which is kind of how i got into animation um one of my friends kind of was like you should watch the show gravity falls and um i was hooked from there because it's this beautiful 3d 2d animated show um, that was on Disney Plus, and, not Disney Plus, Disney XD. <laughs> I think that doesn't exist anymore. Um, and then, so I joined this 3D animation program and decided I wanted to be an animator. And then originally, before going into animation, I wanted to go into science and physics and discovered that I really didn't have the grades for it. So this was kind of an opportunity to try something new that I didn't know, that was new and exciting. and could I, could I could dive right into and kind of experiment new skills and learn new skills and um, kind of find a different branch of happiness to explore. Um, so when I ended up in college, I thought I wanted to be an animator and it turns out I'm a really bad animator. So <laughs> I'm not, I, I loved my teachers. I love my program. I didn't like animation. And then I thought, okay, I'll be a 3D modeler. I'll look into rigging, I'll look into compositing. It turns out I don't like rigging and I don't like modeling either. <laughs> so uh, there's a lot of um, avenues where I kind of discovered very quickly that even if I really had an appreciation for it, it just wasn't it, the right fit for me. So it was really kind of by chance um, in my second, at the end of my second year where I had a teacher show me visual effects for the first time along with Houdini and that was kind of when I had that click moment of this is what I really need to do. Um, I was kind of just in the middle of animation class not really doing what I was supposed to be doing. Um, so I was supposed to be working on an assignment. I think I had completed it or I was just putting it off because <laughs> I just didn't want to animate. And the teacher saw me fooling around making portals in Unreal Engine, and instead of getting angry at me, kind of said, if you love visual effects, you'll love Houdini. And I just didn't, had no idea what any of that meant, so I just said, what? And then they whipped out their iPad, and they showed me these reels of previous students that had graduated from the program that had done visual effects work. And I was like, I want to do that. And that's kind of how I fell into the Houdini rabbit hole. Um, so... But I didn't really end up as a Houdini artist right away after I graduated, which was interesting. <laughs> like, it was also a good experience, I think, looking back on it. It's really hard, I think, to come out of any program and land it into exactly what you want to do, especially if you're successful in, let's say, in grabbing a junior effects role. Um, because you might be wanting to work on the big key shots where you destroy an entire building or do Godzilla sequences, but in reality, you're going to be doing uh, working with pre-made setups. You're going to be doing like very smaller effects work until like the studio trusts trust your skill level. Um, so, but for me, I landed in lighting, rendering, and positing. So I was I was kind of a rendering and lighting artist for a really long time, and. Um, then I switched over to a junior effects role at a different studio, and that's kind of where I became a professional Houdini artist. Um, and I've been doing that since for the past five, six years now. <laughs> that was an interesting gig because that's 
where I kind of started fusing science and visual effects together, there was a big giant poster above my desk of The Incredible Hulk, which was like one of the first movies a studio had worked on. And I was really a big superhero fan at the time. And I was really, I had a science background. I was kind of bored one day and I was just kind of thinking, is there any science that goes into movies like The Incredible Hulk when it comes to the visual effects? So I did some research on it, and unfortunately the answer is no. (laughs) Uh, There isn't a lot of science that goes into film, uh, with the exception of movies like Oppenheimer. And I think there were some visual effects consultants on like movies like Nope, but there's very, very few few movies that actually have factor in uh, science into them. So then I was like, okay, well, maybe it is it possible is it possible to kind of bring these two things together um because you know science we use science all the time to create the software um cgi software that we use today um and it's of course there's scientific concepts behind the tools that we use but why don't we show them on this big screen i think that was the questions in the back of my mind so i started creating a blog about it um bringing all these different pieces together so when people think of references that we want to combine into film and TV, um, we have a place to go and actually understand those references better. Um, so we don't have to really go hunting for them because <laughs> we don't have time in a studio setting to hunt down references and then break down references and then, then give all those details to the artist. Usually it's, here's, here's what the client wants. Here's what you need to do. And I sit down and build up. We have like five days. (laughs) Like That's usually what happens in the studio. I just saw the lack of knowledge there. And I saw the lack. I saw an opportunity to add something that wasn't there to the community. And that's kind of where the science and visual effects started. And it kind of blew up from there. (laughs) I miss studio life a lot. uh, Ever since the strike happened. (laughs) But if uh, pre-strike in Toronto when I was working in the studio, it was awesome. Um, so studio life is, I love it for the social aspects because you meet the people you work with every single day, you get to know them, you get to run around the city and they can become some of your best friends you'll ever make in life, which I really enjoy. Um, but studio life as an effects artist is, um, you'll start your day. A lot of us have flex hours, so it's like, you can start a little bit later after nine, you can start nine or eight whenever you really want. And then you have to do like a mandatory, like eight. Nine, nine, nine hours if you're doing like overtime or something like that in that you can do it from home there's a lot of hybrid options now in the industry too you don't necessarily have to work in a studio if you go into the studio you kind of sit down at your desk um usually you'll have like a morning scrums with your team so that will just involve your department manager sitting down with you and going in a circle making sure everyone's on task if they have any questions concerns or overall like hurdles that they're not able to climb um You'll have your daily reviews if you submit any work with your team to a project. If you want to get a shot approved, you have to submit something to dailies. There's no way of getting around it. Um, and that's sometimes you the place where you get the best feedback about yourself and your abilities. So it's, it's, a, it's a very humbling experience every single day to sit in dailies. Most of your time as an effects artist, I think, is waiting for the farm to finish um, because sims are very heavy. Your day is always planning around the farm. When is the farm going to be available? When are, when can you put stuff on the farm? And when will it get off the farm? So you always have to plan when you're building something and also in tandem with waiting for something to render so you can optimize your time efficiently. Um, that is 90% of the time being an effects artist. The fun parts about being an effects artist in the studio is quite often the R&D tasks. Um, my favorite R&D task was one that I don't know if I can fully mention, <laughs> but it was one for the boys um, spinoff show. And it was m- the most hilarious dailies I've ever been a part of in my entire life because uh, it was the boys. Uh, <laughs> and uh, you can just imagine what we had to sit through. <laughs> Multiple revisions of you know Homelander doing, being Homelander. The dailies are usually also very hilarious when it comes to getting off topic and also staying on topic and uh, getting feedback on things, depending on the context of what you're trying to build in the show. Um, 
but yeah, R and D is really fun because uh, it gives gives you the opportunity to build the biggest parts of a show and the most intriguing parts of a show as an effects artist. So the explosions or anything that needs to be rolled out per shot, so um, or anything that needs to be in every single shot of the film. So one of the R and D things I worked on in the past was for this show called this movie called Chaos Walking that had Tom Holland in. I didn't work on the R and D, but we it was kind of my job to roll out the this kind of particle effect that was in every single shot of the film I think in total I did because I wrote it down in my notebook it's somewhere <laughs> but it was around 183 shots of the same effect uh, throughout the film and so it was just like punching the same thing over and over and over and over through the farm uh, which was like these 200 million particle sims that had multiple different like layered elements that we had to get to comp successfully this went beautiful kind of rainbow effect over the entire uh, film so it was uh, that's quite often sometimes your day if you're not doing R&D so the R&D part is more fun because you're building that effect and then the more taxing is just rolling it out to all the different shots um, because you're just copying and pasting things I would also say the other thing I kind of enjoy about studio life is that there's always something new um, there's never a dull moment <laughs> or rarely a dull moment um, because there's always going to be a different show in the pipeline that's exceptionally interesting to work on. It could be a Marvel movie, it could be a commercial, it could be a video game or something based off a of video game. It's always really, really fascinating.